Hi, everybody. Welcome to the DCC 100 closing show. My name is Joseph Goodman of Goodman Games. I'll pass it over to Harley. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming out tonight. And then I'm here, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> what would your name be, Red Shirt? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm Mike Curtis, but you know, you introduced Harley. Harley was supposed to say, "I'll pass." Sorry, it on. this oh, is yeah. this is the guy who signs his name, Harley Stro, Mr. Mike <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> we have it's a, a convention. You, you give me a sandwich, I'll sign whatever name you want. You know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Um, if you're just joining us, we are here to talk about a Kickstarter. We should probably put that in the chat. So here's the link for the Kickstarter, and we're here talking about. Oh, you know what? I didn't sign into Twitch, so I can't put it in the chat. <laughs> if somebody can put it in the chat to the Kickstarter. We're, uh, we're here to talk about Dungeon Crawl Classics number 100, which is currently live on Kickstarter in its final, what, 56 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, hopefully you have seen the project, which is why you're tuning in here. Uh, and actually, I don't know, should we talk about it, guys, or should we assume that everybody's already seen it? Uh, I don't know. We could do a quick sum up, I think. Yeah. This is, you know, I mean, just in case well, we, we should tuning in, yeah. like, what is all yeah. this? And yeah. I have twenty thousand dollars in my pocket, <laughs> <Yes. off. laughs> and I need <laughs> really big sheets of cardboard to cover my gaming table. <laughs> no, but we should, we should, we should take a moment and and thank everybody that like helped make like it could have been, it was a much less spectacular product, and and we we owe a great deal of thanks to the backers that yes. made it really cool. You know, and so, you know, the, the, the goals that were close to my heart were like handouts, right? Because I love art. I love the art that DCC brings. I love the idea that we're going to have a, uh, an adventure with many, many, many visual handouts. And so it's like, it's spectacularly cool. And you can show stuff to your players and, and, their, and their minds are blown and they live into the adventure. So thank you backers for, for making all the handouts possible. That was, that was really cool yeah, and deeply definitely. appreciated. Yeah, and giving us a giving us a higher quality board, so you know, so we this thing will this yes. thing will stand yeah. up to you know yeah. to, to repeated play and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah, um, it, 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 it could it could have been like a couple of you know like you know notebook paper, you know, like cut out you know, with a pair of scissors and kind of stapled to a board, you know. Yeah. But, but we've moved past that point, Mike. <laughs> I know. And, and thanks to our backers. Is... Thank to our yeah. backers. You know? yes. <laughs> right, but then also then the then the extra discs. Is, is my understanding right where like people can like design their own spinny dungeons like I, I don't know if it's possible but we should send out like templates for that like ahead of time so like you can start designing your own spinny dungeon way before like the thing arrives in the mail and you can like sketch it out on graph paper and start pinning little brass brads together and stuff <laughs> but that's that's well, gonna be awesome yeah yeah, no, I know we have all the photos of Harley. You had two or three or four iterations of your homemade version of this this map with your like brads and spinny paper, and it was pretty yeah. cool. No, it was it was awesome, and and it's and it's fun. Like it, like you know being able to like figure out okay, well, am I going to be able to run? You know, if we make it one every quarter turn or half turn, like there's yeah. there's so many like the, the the potential is enormous for for judges to make like devious dungeons like it it turns one third of a turn only when you say you know the first name you know the scissor com like there's like there's i don't know it, it's, it's one of those things where like every time i hear somebody's like story about sailors like however they happen to run sailors was way cooler than i ever could have imagined you know from like doug's reverse sailors or smith's you know like it's a bug sailors and so like i don't know Hopefully, like two years from now, there's going to be all these different iterations of DC 100, which are so much cooler than, you know, what I imagined was even possible. That's really I, I'm waiting personally. I'm waiting for the genius out there who's going to put this thing together and like automate it. Like, you know, they'll they'll have it totally hooked up to their smartphone. You know, they like, you know, and they'll just have like they'll push a button and like you know they'll have motorized them. You know, like they'll pre built it. It's like a 3D thing. It's going to be amazing. You know, so. <laughs> Um, okay, but I I want to get back to that. But Joseph, do you have do you have a favorite stretch goal that was made possible by our backers? I think same thing you said. I think the blank version of it. I mean, you yeah. sort of set the you know you open the door to all this, and now I think it'll be really cool to see what people come back with. And based on backer feedback, we're going to do it with gloss lamination, which means it's going to be basically dry erase. Nice. So people can either, like you said, maybe we provide a template that they can print out, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then draw on, or they just do dry erase, then they can always wipe it out and restart it once they have another better idea. That's so fun. But it's pretty cool. Um, so before I forget, um, there's some gong farmers that it's it's actually happening. I, I was able to listen to some of them. So gong farmers almanac for everyone in the internet that doesn't know this, um, you know, it's it's basically like friends and family and fans that create fan content for free um, 
for DCC, right? And so, but there's Gong Farmer Records. Um, we have people making music for Music of the Spheres, and like when you're when you're in when when water is in lion, the 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 players will be able to hear it, and be, you'll hear water sounds and and whatever like context the lion is in, and then when you when you spin Earth into lion, like this is all happening. Like Gong Farmer Records is totally coming together to create soundscapes for free for people to 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 play as as background audio when they're running through DCC 100. It's so cool. I heard like the first four this morning. It was amazing. Blew my mind. That's pretty cool. So this is what Gong Farmers do in their spare time when they're not writing almanacs. <laughs> <laughs> they make records. It's awesome. It's so. Do cool. they put the chamber pots over and like? You know, <laughs> I don't know. They're amazing though. But like, things. just like the clarity. I don't know. It's 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 really cool. It's really cool. Oh, I remember gosh. like a long time ago. Sorry, and I'll shut up. But like, um, you were like, all right, Harley or I think you were talking to a bunch of us. You're like, we got to make adventures that, you know, like the, the, the customer can't make it home. And that's becoming harder and harder these days, right? <laughs> like we set the bar with like a bunch of spinning maps, but like folks at home do amazing stuff. It's so mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, no, I think, you know what? I think if we, we the, the trend keeps going, especially with, you know, like this one, we had so many potential kind of art hangout, you know, like uh, artists hanging out and everything. Like, I think the next time we do this major adventure, eventually it's, it's, it's just going to be completely an art adventure. There'll be no text whatsoever because, you know, every stretch goal will bump, you know, another 1,000 words off of the final <laughs> thing. So this is just, it'll be entirely, it'll be like the mo the castle moment chance. It'll be entirely mime, you know, set, set adventure. I think, you know. <laughs> Do you guys remember those books from when we were kids that were, uh, you bought two, maybe it was from Games Workshop, I think it was British, but it came with two books, and they were all pictures, and you would start off, and as you flip through them, you were like the white knight, and he was the black knight, and eventually you would see the other character approaching, am I the only one who bought this book? I, you, you might like, have been the only one who owned it, but I was aware of them, you know. I, it was super cool. So like two people, it was almost like a, a mutual choose your own adventure and the books were synced. So if you each ended up at a certain corridor in the dungeon, your picture would actually show the other character approaching you and then you would fight to get it to the book. <laughs> no way. Could you like sneak up on him? Could you like, like somehow get behind so. him? I believe so. That's it, it crazy. Was, what were they called? If anybody in the chat remembers the name of those books, I have one at home, maybe both of them somewhere in my... It was a uh, Lost Worlds, was it? Maybe it's some name like that. I feel like it was British, like one of those, Steve, you know, British Steve Jackson things. Right, uh, right. I yeah, mean, I I remember I remember there being ads in the back of Dragon Magazine for Lost Worlds, which I think was something along like that. But you know, who knows? That was thirty years ago, so you know. And, and yeah, it wasn't it was Fighting cool. Fantasy? No, Fighting Fantasy was the the like yeah. you know your own choose your own adventure stuff. Yeah. Well, that was it wasn't more than choose your own adventure because you had to roll dice. I know, and the uh, yeah. And the, and the and the was it the uh, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Devers um, uh, Lone, oh, Lone Wolf? Wolf. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Those were good. Those were good. That was, yeah. like that, was, like, that, was that was the three headed mace. That's where or the flail that came into. That's where sailors uh, mm. the flail came from. Yeah, that was really cool. All right, well, we should focus up. Joseph, you got some yeah. like, trivia for us or something? Three yeah, old guys reminisce idea. about being seven years old. Remember <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Elena, do you have the first trivia queued up? All right, so everybody in the audience, to keep Ooh. the theme going of this being DCC number 100, um, as you know, we've been posting trivia every day on the Kickstarter, and we actually have some trivia that you can answer in a poll here on the, on the Twitch channel, so make sure your chat is opened up. Once you answer the chat, you can get a chance to vote, um, and actually, Elena, if you want to pop it up, and once you vote, you can see the results, and let's Are there, are there no scrolls involved in this, or like... Um, well, uh, not in this one, actually. Bragging rights. Bragging rights, right, yes. Right. <laughs> um, so, for, so hopefully you guys all see the poll. For which of these editions of D&D &D has Goodman Games not... Oh, it truncated. But has Goodman Games not published a DCC module? Should be the last couple words there. Ooh. These editions of D&D. &D, that's tricky. So is it first edition that we've not published one, second edition, third edition, or fourth edition? Okay, so we're not considering like BX or like... Uh... Oh, I'm loving all that under one E. Good, good okay. call. But yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call three second matter. edition. All right. Turn in your OSR badge, Mr. Goodman. Yeah, I know. We call all that right. splitting hairs. All right. There's, luckily, nobody's answered third edition yet. Anybody answers three E and we kick them out of this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, the numbers are moving around quite a bit. Oh, that's it. It's 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 oh, All right. So Elena, you left it live for about a minute. Is that right? So everybody got about I don't know how much time passed. Half a minute <laughs> left to vote. <laughs> All right. It's 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 there. It's kind of evening out. This is kind of interesting. Hey, you know? hey. Almost almost 33, 33, 33, but we'll see. I think all right. So, might... oh, can I answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike, go ahead. Oh. What's your answer, Mike? <laughs> you, you don't get a no scroll. <laughs> no scroll oh, for you. Somebody answer third edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is actually second edition. We have published first edition modules. Uh, Oh, that's funny. I put a little trophy by 4E, I guess, because that got the most votes. But that is not the correct answer. We published first edition, third edition, and fourth edition, but not second edition adventures. We have had many requests to publish second edition modules. We get emails about it still. Wow. But there's only so many times you can, you can uh, yeah. Anyway. Fourth, fourth edition, it won, the, it won the award for being most wrong. That's it. <laughs> It's, I actually, while we're on stretch goals, Harley, you mentioned this. I think the loot the body stretch goal is really cool. Oh so, my God. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Go, go. Yeah. yeah. No, this, this is another good one. Speaking of music and, and gong farmers conducting music, not that they're gong farmer, but they have more experience than that. But uh, for those in the audience who don't know, loot the body sings songs about D and D adventures and DCC adventures. And they're really good, surprisingly good. And they've done, um, I don't know, like 20 or 30 of these now, which are on YouTube. It's and ludicrous. In, yeah. Yeah, they if anybody has the link, drop it in the chat. But they have a great YouTube channel. With a lot of, they do music videos too that go with the, the music, and you can just kind of they're kind of like psychedelic. Like you can just you know, twenty minutes later, you realize you've been watching this thing for twenty minutes. And the music's <laughs> great. <laughs> um, but they did a song inspired by this adventure, uh, which is really cool. And so that's a stretch goal. Everybody's going to get an MP3 of that. And then if you want to, you can still add on the flexi disc because they made physical or they're going to make physical flexi discs, which is also really cool. The flexi discs are so rad. I'm super in love with them. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I don't think I even have a record player anymore. I, or at least I don't know where it is. Probably yeah. in the basement. I thought Dead Alive did the official song for this one. You spin me right, right, down right, 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 right. <laughs> Dance a little longer, Mike. It's not coming back to me yet. <laughs> Stretch, stretch. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll keep dancing until this until the, the Kickstarter goes up more. Yeah. Hey, we're losing pledges. Stop, <laughs> Stop dancing. Oh. That reminds me. We should probably mention this. The point of this, by the way, everybody in the audience, is to help support this Kickstarter. So we're trying to get to 200k, which is where we will get. Uh, the next stretch goal, which is actually Harley, tell them about the bespoke foil character. Oh my God. Okay. Right this is going to be so cool. Right. Okay. So for the entire, for the, for the, for the history of DCC, we've always had like disposable character sheets, like, right. Like, like violently disposable. Like we made the, the <laughs> stamps that, you know, that, that, you know, you, you stamp dead on them. And then, and then, you know, you like a lot of judges, they tear them up or they throw them away. But, but for finally, like, we're going to make like essentially what, what amounts to like the permanent character folder folio. Um, and, and it, Joseph, it was your idea to do foil. So if, if, it's, if you, if you don't want to do foil, you should back out now. Cause I think we're going to get there, <laughs> but it's just so like, like, like an 11 by 17 sheet folded in half. Right. So there's like what, one, two, three, four faces to it. That that's eight and a half by 11 um, with like all the information um, that you could possibly you know, like conceive of needing for for your DC you know your your DCC character like they finally made it to fifth level and like now it's it's time to like transfer them off of like the the the, the scribbled out you know zero level sheet or you know whatever whatever sheet you've been erasing on them right because you guys remember when you were kids like you would you would erase the hit yes. points so much <laughs> that you would like go through the sheet of paper and like and there you inevitably you run out of room like on like well I have 36,000 gold pieces, you know, and I'm still tallying, you know, three, you know, how many gold pieces I have and that sort of thing. So anyways, so to but just to have a, a really cool collection of character sheets um, for the characters that, 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 you know, making it to fifth level in DCC is a real accomplishment, um, yeah. let alone, you know, anything higher than that. 
And so, yeah, so hopefully, I don't know, you know, in the, in the next 45 minutes, we'll <laughs> amass another $3,000 that, that makes it possible to produce those, uh, those character sheets. But I'm excited. They, 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 I think it could be really cool. It was a great idea to do the, like the whole foil piece. And uh, it'd be nice to have a, a character sheet that you can like transcribe you're, you know, that, that gong farmer that made it out of zero level and you hated him. And by the time he made it to first, he was like the world's worst magician. And by the time he made it to third, he was, he somehow learned fireball. And by the time he made it to fifth, it's like, all right, now it's time to transfer the, like, I'm keeping this guy. <laughs> and, you know, you can still like write his goat in there as animal companion or, or what have you. But yeah, I'm excited. I don't know. We'll see if it happens. And if not, maybe, maybe the next Kickstarter, whatever, you know, whatever that is, that's cool. We could also do uh, goldenrod instead of foil. Yeah, like yeah. That, that was your idea. Print another goldenrod. Like remember those goldenrod? Uh, totally. Eight D character sheets or D and D. Yep. That was that was the sign, man. When you had the goldenrod, because oh. you know, that, was, that was not photocopied at the library for for ten cents. Ooh, that was, you know, well right? played. There's there's John Hirschberger in the in the background screaming goldenrod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have a good suggestion in the chat. Thank you, Great Nate. The first Ooh. time fan kit. That's a great reminder. Yeah. So everybody out there, and we get constant questions about this. So I'll answer this in general. But if you're if you're looking to add something to your pledge, um, I, God, I feel like I'm selling. What was that? That what was that guy used to sell? Like Ron, would Ron Popeil. Ron Popeil. Yeah, I feel like I'm Ron <laughs> Popeil here. <laughs> if you'd like to add something to your pledge, but <laughs> um, well, this is a good one. Seriously. Uh, so we have a thing called the first time fan kit, and this has evolved over the years because we constantly get questions from and new folks who are like, well, can I get dice and also a module and a judge's screen, you know, all of the rule book for a good deal. So the answer is yes. So if you want to add this onto your pledge, it, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head, I believe it's either 30 or $35. Um, but that's basically the cost of the rule book by itself. We allow <laughs> this option with the idea being, it, it, it's kind of like selling cocaine that first hits free. <laughs> <laughs> and and DCC like that because once you're in, it's hard to get out. It's that much fun. But the first time they get, you're going to get a core rule book, a tube of dice, let's see, a judge's screen and an adventure module, if I remember correctly. And we usually throw in something else for free while we're at it. So you might get a Goodman Games Gazette or something else like that. Yeah. Um, and it's a great value because basically, you know, Dice 2 by itself typically costs more than that or the rule book by itself typically right. costs more than that. The only thing is we don't guarantee exactly which one. So it'll come from our stock of current, you know, adventure modules, Dice, um, rule, rule books, et cetera. So you'll typically get usually a soft cover rule book or one we have a little too many of on the hardcover side. The Dice will be, uh, usually whatever two we have a lot of at the moment, um, stuff like that. But you'll get a good mix. And if you're new to it, it's great. So consider adding, adding that on if you're new to DCC or have a friend you might want to give a gift to or something like that. So along those same lines, Joseph, uh, Jerk Dentley asked, did the uh, 100 poster get unlocked? Yes. Yes. A great reminder. So we had a little thing where if you shared the project, we could get to the, the poster of 100 covers and it's unlocked. So all backers are going to get, or I should say all print backers are going to get a print poster. Um, and we've actually done a lot more than 100 modules. I think I feel I like I should count this at some point, but we should figure it out. Yeah, I guess maybe this poster is our chance because it'll have the cover art to every mo module. That's the idea. And uh, we'll figure out how many we actually published. But I wanted to do it. Remember, we were talking about the, the Van Vampirella posters from like the 70s. Do you guys remember that? I, I don't think I've ever seen those. Who was I talking to about this? Remember the poster that was like six feet tall, and the idea was you'd hang it on the back of your bedroom door and it had a picture oh, yeah, of Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It came up. yeah. Yeah. yeah, this comes up a lot with me. <laughs> <But anyway. laughs> so I need to find somebody who can do a six foot tall poster, but it'd be cool to have the hundred covers like, you know, that big so you can hang right. it on the back here. Yeah. You can still you find them in record them. shops, right? They're all rolled up. Like right. there's that, like those, the, yeah, the, like the sheets you can fold through in the back of the record shop. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Cool. If you, if you can't find somebody who can do like a closet poster in the Bay Area, I've lost all faith in humanity. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. we shouldn't promise a closet poster yet. Yes, yeah. so I don't actually know how big it's going to be. I need to find out. I need to find somebody who can print big posters first. Right. The goal is to have the, the module covers big enough to be, you know, to look cool so that we're not going to print them all. We printed 100 of them, they're all, you know, half an inch tall. That is not the goal. <laughs> So I'm watching you, the, yeah, sorry. I'm watching the numbers climb. The, the wall right. poster, the closet poster is a popular thing. <laughs> Vampirella, do you think you're going to do all the covers or just like, are, like, are we going to do like 100 and 20? Like, you know, like, because there's quite I mean, a few. Yeah, let me find a poster printer first and then 
if his limit is 36 inches or 48 inches or 72 right. inches or whatever, sure, and sure. then we'll figure out how many we can do. At least 100, if not more. Because we also have DCC Horror, DCC Holiday Adventures. Right. If you get in a Mutant Crawl Classics, DCC Lightmar. Convention um, involved rules, you know, like all that. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff. There's a lot. Nice. Actually, let's let's do another trivia question while we're here. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elena, do you have the next one queued up? Okay, and everybody, if this doesn't actually, I don't know if the text will, the text seemed to be cropped last time. That's right. Elena posted it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, okay good. All right, let's have the next trivia question come up. So what creature has not been featured in a Brendan LaSalle adventure? What's best about this is three out of the four have been. Hang gliding kobolds, giant, oh, there's another crop here, giant planet-sized space turtle, that should be space turtle, chain devils, or humanoid cockroachmen. So which Ooh. creature has not been featured in a Brendan LaSalle adventure? What do you think, Mike? <laughs> do you know the <laughs> you answer? Can see little bars moving around. Roger, Roger. <laughs> it's got to be chain devils, right? Because for a while, like everything we wrote had a chain devil. Like Remember back chain in, devil guy? 3.5 for a long time ago, we wrote a lot of chain devils, yeah. Do you remember the guy who came up to the booth to argue with us about the stats? I think you 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 had mentioned that to me. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Like we got it wrong. I still remember what he looks like. I don't know his real name. I just he's in my head, he's chain devil guy. This was a Gen Con, like uh what year was it? Sometime in like the third edition era. We, we yes, we published a lot of chain devils. Somehow we oh, yeah. do like five modules in a row that had chain devils. Yeah, it was our ziggurat this yeah. question. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and uh apparently like there was an editing slip and like the stats and one of them didn't match the stats and the other, like our chain devils. And this guy had like the kind of memory where he noticed that and he came up to tell, I forget the, you know, the stats in module number 70 or whatever, 27 yeah, were yeah. different from 34. Uh, and you really wanted to pick a bone about it. So right. you had to like talk him off the ledge. And, and that was the day that the seed for the Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing game was, was planted. <laughs> <laughs> I can just make this stuff up. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so it looks like most people, oh, the numbers are still moving a little bit. Okay. Like, give them time. Don't yeah. rush them. What are, what are our other choices beyond Chain Devil? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. hang gliding. Kobolds. Okay. Hang gliding kobolds, giant planet sized space turtle. Okay. Chain devils and humanoid cockroachmen. Humanoid cockroach. I don't know that one. Um, oh, Poland did. So, so actually, a uh, hang gliding kobolds was selected, um, but that has been featured in a Brendan LaSalle adventure. Uh, I believe he also has velociraptors, but they were on gliders instead of, or maybe they were parachutes instead of velociraptors on gliders. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were the parachutes, the velociraptors yeah. and parachutes, the kobolds and hang gliders. This was in one of that compilations of like. Uh, the adventure continues. Oh. The adventure begins. We did had the, I believe, the hang gliding kobold. Oh the no 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 no! What? Reach behind you guys. Do you have that book handy? I don't, unfortunately. All no. right, you, you have it handy? I, okay. I, 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 we screwed up. Hang gliding kobolds wins. But keep going, keep going. No, no, no. I mean, it has been featured. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> so it looks like I was going to get the book. <laughs> so, uh, giant planet-sized space turtle is actually on the cover of DCC number, the epic level one, I think it's number 32 um, or 33. And I still remember, this is why I'm never going to publish an epic level module again. <laughs> don't finally publish an epic level module. No, wait, like, I thought I it was, it. wait, all right. Maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe I screwed it up. What did, so we have Jeff LaSala and Brendan LaSala. Brendan LaSalle, Jeff LaSalle. I know, did, did, they, yeah. did he do hang gliding kobolds? Brendan was LaSalle it, did hang gliding kobolds. It wasn't Jeff? Because Jeff also did a kobold adventure it w I'm, uh, I'm, maybe. i am certain that brendan has done hang gliding kobolds all I, right i'm right. willing I, to make any can't. amount of money that half right. of the time okay. that brendan and i spend at conventions like war together like brendan it will come up so mike i have a problem what is this i have these clown driders that i have <laughs> which i'm trying to figure out how to use like <laughs> And and I just loved it because because Brennan is always coming up with something like all right so so for X crawl there's a giant flapjack waffle machine that they're fighting on and I'm trying to figure out how like, what a back bonus like melted butter should have like that's that's most of Brennan and I discussion. <laughs> I can't wait for X crawl classics. It's gonna be like oh it's gonna be series. amazing. Yeah, how, but actually to that... get back. Hold oh, on, yeah, we gotta yeah. get the answer. We forgot to get the actual answer. Okay. The, the answer, the creature that has not been featured in a Brendan LaSalle adventure is actually Chain Devils. Okay. He made a point yeah. of not doing Chain Devils when they were all the rage. Because we were we all doing have, Chain Devils. Yeah. Right. And the humanoid cockroachman I always loved because he 
he basically said, what's the one thing that makes all real people recoil in horror? He has this thing where he puts things in the adventures that you're actually afraid of in real life. And he said, when uh -huh. he, at the table, he, he breaks out, like nobody's scared of the dragon or the minotaur, but you break out cockroachmen. Cockroach and everybody's man. like, ah. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to your point, Harlot, yeah, x Call Classics still in the works. Um, How close are we? I know, Mike, you said they're still writing one or two of the adventures are still in the works, if I remember right. For um for 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 XCC, I feel like there's still one or two that still have to be finished. Most, or the... I mean, um, most of them are ready. I mean, uh, I think Brendan uh, Brendan is working on one more right now, uh, and then we're then we're we're assembling the book of adventure, the book of uh, encounter stuff too. So that but that's you know that's another thing on top of it. But but yeah, well, um, can I, can I say the name of the adventure that Brendan is working on? I don't know. Can you? We're rated PG. Well, I, I can't. No, it, it's, it's PG. But you know, because because we we went back and forth on this, and this is what I'm very happy about. But um, this is I think this is going to be the funnel. Um, and it is called Murder Mountain Smackdown. So yeah, it's just, oh, I like that one. <laughs> it's a great title. Oh. It has that WWF vibe. Like it just it just sounds perfect. <laughs> and Doug Doug did the art. It's very it's a very cool art. Co uh, Doug Doug cover and everything. So yeah. No. Mm. Cool. I can't wait to see those. That's going to be awesome. Oh, we should th thank you, SithCon, who just posted, and we should talk about the dice. That's a good reminder. Oh, right. How's that so, poll coming? Yeah, actually, great question. Let me look up the answer to that. So <laughs> maybe, Harley, you tell them about that while I look up the answer to the current poll. Okay, sweet. So um, uh, Impact Dice, um, Tom from Impact, who is amazing um, and makes dice with his family, you know, like his, his son's like his like like ink designer or resin designer like chooses the colors and whatnot anyhow so they came up with like custom dice for for dcc 100 so there's a there's a water die which is beautiful which i'm absolutely in love with um an earth die which looks like you know your coffee and then there's like um and then a fire die and then but for for dcc but we couldn't decide on which which one of the void colors we wanted and so you know we went back to the adventure and looked at the description and it's always this like this emerald brilliant you know like flame green um color and so and so tom came back and he's like here i got the i got these four colors for you and um and joseph was like oh sweet i like the sparkly one and i'm like ah no i like the the green and black one or maybe that was what um, michael liked anyways we all chose different colors and so we, we came back i was like all right sweet well let's make just we don't need to decide it. We have we have three thousand other people that can decide it who are way smarter than we are. Let's let's put it to the people. And so, uh, for the for the duration of the Kickstarter, now you guys have had the opportunity to choose between you know one of these four colors and vote for what color the void die ought to be. Um, you know, in in the in the impact dice selection. And so, how are they doing? Are yeah. Those? So we're we're gonna post the link, Elena. If you can post that link in the chat. So this is the link where you can actually vote. So we've had about nine hundred votes as of right now. And of the choices, option, hold on, now I gotta make sure I don't right. just quote myself. Not option, like we, we, <laughs> we screwed this up with our graphic earlier. Yeah, <laughs> option two, void number two, continues to be in the lead. Um, nobody seems to like number three. And then what are these? Uh, one and four, one and four have basically been neck and neck the whole time. But number two is the one that consistently pulls ahead. Is that is that green and black? Is that the... What's the descriptor for it? We should look at it. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me look at it. Number um, two is the one that um, it's like green, <laughs> like with like swirly bits. Okay. Uh, it's it's green and black oh, swirl with, with a little it's bit It's a sparkle. starry swirl, right? Okay. Star so we have, all right. So number yeah. one is the emerald and black opaque swirl of yes. whom Harley is a fan, which is losing. We have, uh, I know, right? I'm number sorry, two, guys. emerald and black <laughs> starry swirl. I, Joseph, I want to say that you liked number three, the emerald starry. I like number three. Yeah. Yeah. You, you were like, everyone always likes glittery dice. And then um, apparently nobody likes glittery dice. <laughs> 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 and number four, emerald and white opaque swirl. Oh, that's pretty cool too, though. One and four are sweet, but but it sounds like two is pulling ahead. Well, by two, quite a bit. Two's like ever like yes, it's from like the second response onward, it's been clearly ahead. So nice, right? Yeah. On. But anyway, if you guys want to vote, if, if there's you know enough of you out there who want to chime in now and vote, maybe you can swing the needle. Right, um, but get, it's looking get, pretty likely that. Yeah. yeah, you can get Joseph's emerald starry dice to, to pull ahead. <laughs> yes, go for everybody vote one. If you haven't already, vote one. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you're watching this and, and you want to help us get this Kickstarter over the line, you can basically add these on your pledge. 
Um, they're what am I? Thirty five dollars each, if I remember correctly, and you know four different varieties. The Void exact color is going to be TBD, but pretty likely going to be option two here. And the others all have specific colors, which have been posted in the various yeah. uh, updates and so on. Actually, they're on the front page of the Kickstarter. I see them right there. The the, the fourteen dice set, right? Yeah, fourteen dice sets. Yeah. Cool. 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 What three, four, five, six, seven, seven. eight, ten mm. percentile? Yeah. Twelve, yeah. fourteen, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, thirty. I think that's right. Nice. Seven and seven. Yes, seven and seven. Yes. Seven. Yeah. And and if you charge Ooh. if you charge thirty four ninety nine, you actually get a, a two sided die thrown in two because you get that penny back and you just the <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Fifteen dice. <laughs> yes. Um. And so let's try another trivia question, Elena. I think you have one more queued up. All right, so this is one that is about which settings have been published in DCC modules. Um, which of these cities has not appeared in a DCC adventure? Mm. Freeport, Lankmar, Punjar, or we were limited here by number of characters, but City State of the Invincible Overlord. Which one has not appeared in a DCC adventure? Waterdeep. Waterdeep. <laughs> don't, don't confuse the audience, Mike. <laughs> Jen asks, can we get a mixed void dice set? Oh, you mean like mixed patterns, Jen? Is that what you mean? Like some of the option two, some of the option four? No, you're breaking it off. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble yes, is but Jen has to pack them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, manufacturing wise, like it's really hard because there's like a minimum run. But sure, if you want to pack them. <laughs> What's the story about the dice that got shipped to Keith and like all the tubes had exploded? Oh, yes. No, there was. Yeah. So things you learn early on, we, so when the dice were tubed, there's like a piece of tape put at the top, but it turns out we didn't use like strong enough tape. And so one of the distributors, um, they never fessed up to it, but we were able to trace the evidence back. They basically <laughs> dropped a bunch of tubes and they all opened up. And so if you bought dice in like the years, this is like maybe, 20, 15, 16, and 17 or something. And you're like, why did I get two D4s and no D6 or whatever? And, and, and you know, we had impact guys replaced all the missing guys. We finally figured out what happened. One of the distributors who remain unnamed and, and like, it's probably just some dude in the warehouse who dropped the box, all the, you know, the tops popped open, all the dice went scattering. And he's, he just like started throwing dice back in the tubes and, and then proceeded to ship it all out without double checking what got stuffed in. So people got random assortments of dice. And then obviously complained and we made it right. And then eventually we had the distributor ship like all that stuff back to Keith, oh. the warehouse Yeti at the time. And Keith, you know, <laughs> dumped it all out, worked with Tom, dumped it all out, reassembled as many tubes as he could. Uh, Tom handled this and then ended up with a bunch of leftover dice at the end. But yeah, the, if only this distributor had, you know, fessed up and sent it to us, we would have reassembled all the tubes instead of having screwed up tubes pop up for six months. <laughs> the but we also learned an important lesson to use like, we, 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 we use high quality tape now, guys. High no, we do. Tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... The, the poll is over, and the winner is actually the winner this time. Uh, <laughs> that's correct. So, Invincible Overlord, the city state of the Invincible Overlord. We have never, we've never done anything for it. No. We have not. We have done Freeport. Um, yeah. That was actually <laughs> Shadows in Freeport was number nineteen, I think, in the line. And uh, who picked Pujar, man? There were like three, <laughs> three adventures of Pujar in the title. Of course, that was the fourth edition era. We all try to forget that. Um, yeah, those are no, those are good adventures. You should look at the art of that. That is amazing. Remember, we did that one with like uh, was cell swords of Punjar, where like you could like explore like three different levels of the yes, that's right of the yeah. of the slums. That was sweet. We, we yeah, we'll have to. We should bring those back for go a, back any and, system other than fourth edition. <laughs> yeah, because it, it has all the old artists. Like the the art is brilliant and beautiful maybe, yeah. maybe there's somebody who's gonna have a discussion with you about that <laughs> <laughs> there have been fans who have asked for more fourth edition modules not many but they're out there sure and sure. we uh we tend to answer no <laughs> that's the one i try to forget you know I, I i bet i bet you the fans if you told them that we were going to do like you know a dcc version of punjar i i don't think they would get like you know oh that's the worst idea ever so you know I yeah mean, <laughs> no, punjar is it is it's great um that's actually harlow wasn't one of the punjar modules the one where doug actually snuck in a picture of fafford and the gray mouse oh yeah totally yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's all yeah. i mean it's in the dna yeah yeah yeah, yeah. although i was rereading um elephant of the tower robert e howard 
like yeah. the last couple nights. The Tower first, of the Elephant. Tower, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. The first paragraph in that, like literally the first paragraph is just amazing. Mike, you should read it out loud if you have it. I'm, I'm trying to see if I have it right here. Or oh, not. it's like, it's like everything. I mean, it's like, man, the dude was just hitting his stride right then. It Did I so tell good. you that? I read that out loud to my oldest son. There's like a bedtime story last year, <laughs> you know, which took us like two months. But um, <sighs> I've never read Robert E. Howard out loud before. We've read, uh -huh. I think, three of the Coney Answer. It reads out loud really well. I like it's got that. this really rhythmic, lyrical quality yeah. was writing that I didn't get until I read it out loud. And that cadence, really yeah, yeah. 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 All yeah, right. Yeah. So you want it? Hit us. You One paragraph. It. I All love right. the fact that you had this like lying around at your desk, Mike. <laughs> it it kind of goes with the job, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Torches flared murkily in the revels of the mall, where the thieves of the East held carnival by night. In the mall, they could carouse and roar as they liked, for honest people shunned the quarters, and watchmen, well paid with stained coins, did not interfere with their sport. Along the crooked, unpaved streets, with their heaps of refuse and sloppy puddles, drunken roisterers staggered, roaring. Steel glittered in the shadows, where where, where rose the shill laughter of women and the sound of scuffling and strugglings. Torchlight licked luridly from broken windows and wide thrown doors, and out of those doors, stale smells of wine and rank sweaty bodies, clamor of drinking jacks and fists hammered on rough tables, snatches of obscene songs rushed like a blow in the face. <laughs> That's like, I mean, like, all right, boom, done. Like the rest of us can give up. It's so amazing. <laughs> Like lurid light, like 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 the torch light is like like kind of like leaning in from the window, trying to like you know get a glimpse at you know whatever. That's just so good. And sloppy puddles. Who wrote sloppy puddles? I would never think to like put that phrase oh, together. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but I mean, but the point being like, oh, like of course a sloppy puddle, and then and then and then stained coins. Like oh, the whole thing is just so good. It's really well done. Yeah, it's it so good there. Um, did we did we answer we did we did answer the thing right the, the... actually I feel like we got to answer we did let's answer I feel like there's some questions in the chat okay, cool. that I want to answer right. we got a bunch of questions in the chat we should make sure to catch so first of all somebody said fourth edition of what that would be fourth edition of the Indies um, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's really clever not GURPS um, somebody says thoughts on a castle white walk reprint in any form thought is yes uh, so uh, we definitely want to do it. I'm sure you guys have heard this story a thousand times, but that was commissioned originally as a 96 page adventure. And then Chris and Adrian turned in 765 pages, I think. So I'm sincerely hopeful that when we convert this to fifth edition and or DCC, it doesn't become even bigger. But yeah, so uh, not just Felony Beans, but we're already thinking about bringing Castle White Rock back in you know, some sort of form, probably a box set, uh, not anytime soon because it takes a while, but maybe in a year or two. Uh, but we all love that adventure and want to see it come back. And then uh, somebody else had a question I feel like I missed. Um, I've, if somebody has a question we didn't answer, drop, drop. Oh, wait. Great Babe says, get Harley's Row to see on camera for verification that if the player has a certain set when in that part of the map. Oh, so you're saying basically if you have like the Ooh. void dice or the fire dice, you're in that part of the, the map, that they get an extra plus one. You see absolutely. what you're saying, Harley? Oh, that's a given. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> without a question. Go buy no, some no, dice, if, people. <laughs> if, if, if you if you if you bring you know the fire dice to the table and your characters are adventuring in fire, you definitely get plus one to that roll without a, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Get, I, you, yeah, no, Jen's right. Not what not plus one die, just plus right. one. Yeah, but you do not get any bonus if you set your dice on fire. That does not count. They have to be <laughs> specific fire dice. Okay, you know we do, the last thing we need is like you know like well, I'm suing good for game because we burned our house down playing DCC 100. No, oh, that that those were the origins of Doug Con though. Um, it was when we were we were we were like um, the couple Gen Cons we were like way out beyond the train tracks. Remember? Like, yes, that's right. right. Um, so one night Doug and I hiked up up to the train tracks we're like oh my god this would be amazing we need to bring candles out here and run dcc by candlelight and you can play in our game if you can find us and then <laughs> uh then he opted for the embassy suites instead <laughs> yeah it's always better to get the embassy suites but yeah what was the name of that the homewood suites i think it was that place yeah. way out behind the tracks that was the yeah I, I, um i remember on the map that doug did there was the stink factory i remember that was one of the landmarks so. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I can't wait to get back to Gen Con, but I wonder how much India has changed. I mean, half the places right. I know are probably gone or changed by now. 
Yeah. Right. Mm. Oh, well, somebody asked, are the dice exclusives? Um, maybe it actually depends on how many get pledged for. We basically have to produce a minimum. So my goal is to produce about a thousand of each set. And if that is the number that kicks or backers have backed, and, and if you guys pledge for 1200 or whatever, we'll do, you know, we'll obviously make enough. Um, but if you guys basically cover the minimum, then they, they become a Kickstarter exclusive. Uh, if not, we'll have some leftover, which we'll eventually, you know, sell on the website or at cons or whatever. Nice. Yeah. All right, let's try another trivia question. All I right. think- uh, well, We're almost at 15 minutes uh, to go, so. Uh, oh, okay. All right, what ooh. ubiquitous D&D-ish spell does not appear in the DCC core rulebook? So the rulebook has sort of you know adaptations of many classic D&D spells um, as well as some other exciting ones. But there's one that was not, uh, sorry, that does not actually appear with its DCC version in the core rulebook. So is it oh, magic wait, wait, missile, wait. protection from evil, light or fireball? Models uh, <laughs> irresistible dance. <laughs> <laughs> there's still time to put that in, Mike. <laughs> Next printing. <laughs> You gotta wonder how that spell came about. Like you know, <laughs> I'm sure there's a story. Some right? joke, some bad joke. Yeah. All right, sorry. What do, I was, I was, I was hooked up. I was, I was thinking, oh, it's got to be wish because it's D and D ish. I was like, ah, oh, they're really clever and they're putting the answer to the question. What, are, what are our options again? <laughs> yeah. So the mul multiple choice options are magic missile, protection from evil, light, or fireball. Ah, oh, okay, All right. See the numbers moving around there as people make their selections. Yeah, yeah. And Mike, if you, wrote, it, yeah. If you, if you were to write wish for DCC, how would you write it, Mike? Um, oh, that's a hard one. You basically, uh, you uh, you do not roll dice. Is you just you tackle the judge and you tickle them until they, <laughs> they make you you know they they agree to to give your character whatever you want. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Very much. It's working on that DCC LARP rules, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh, what if like, what if like every entry, what if you needed to roll like a nat twenty and like every like you knew the spell, but like nineteen and below, like horrible things happen and like varying degrees, <laughs> like different ways that the wish goes wrong. That's cool. That uh, that demands a table. D one hundred. All the ways the wish went wrong. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, or, like, it's like that. Uh, that that kind of optional rule in the whole. Deities and demigods, gods. There's like a if you sp if you said the name of a god out loud, there was a one percent chance oh, yeah. there you know, a game. And show it was up, insane. You know? Yeah, it was like cumulative. Even like, come on, dude. It's like how often do these gods show up? <laughs> yeah. uh, I I remember there were some times when people just start yelling out the names of gods. You know, just be like <laughs> Thor, <laughs> Thor, and, Thor. And I, I there was another one. I think we, we were on a, we were like adventuring in the um. It was like a high level campaign, and the judge the, the the judge was really strict about that. So we started coming up with alternate names for powerful arch demons because oh that's clever. Said, like orcus you would hear the dice clatter you know so eventually that's funny what is the all backstory right, so, of the no scroll we have a question for the audience Ooh, oh, okay yeah. Wait, first of all let me go back to the poll so the yeah. the audience selected light and that is correct that is the D D or spell that does not appear in the core rule book at least of these selections um and then to answer some questions that came up when does the void dice colorway get officially decided? Yes, after the pledge is in. So in about, what is this, 13 more minutes now, um, wherever the, right. the votes stand at that point will be the final tally. Um, okay. And then somebody asked, what is the backstory of the nose scroll? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I think I actually have one, but it's in the other room. I should have brought one. I'm sure you guys all read Marvel comics back in the, any time in the last 50 years, right? Everybody read Marvel comics. Does everybody know the no prize? I think you should explain it, yeah. <laughs> I don't Nobody know. knows what a no prize is. Well, I, if they knew what the no prize was, they knew what the no scroll was. Well, <laughs> yeah, that very good point. Very good point, Harley. <laughs> so, if, if there were no prizes in the Marvel movie, <laughs> then that would be yes. But you know, <laughs> good point. So back in the day, I forget how this started, but Stanley, I think he had to find like a continuity error or something. Right. Yep. But Marvel yep. would was that it? Yeah. So in the yep. letters page, people would write him letters, and if you found like some sort of error or mistake. Marvel would ma mail you a no prize, which by the way, I never got one. I always wanted one, but um, it remains one of my stupid childhood dreams to get my letter to a comic book printed in the letter stage. That's never, I never pulled that off. <laughs> that, that drove you to become a publisher. You're like, oh, I'll publish <laughs> myself, damn it. I'll make my own letters page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how we have a letter. Yeah, anyway, but um, yeah, so they would mail you an envelope that said on it, no prize, you know, with like a drawing and there was nothing in it. It's an empty envelope. So we have what we call the no scroll. 
which uh, is illustrated by Doug. It's got some cool art on the front and it contains a genuine Goodman Games no scroll, which means there's nothing in it. <laughs> and the envelope is mailed sealed. So if you want to open up, double check, you can ruin your no scroll or just hold it up to the light to verify there's nothing in that. So it's basically just a custom envelope that looks really cool with some cool art on it. And we traditionally have given them out as um, really like prizes for volunteers or people who went above and beyond or just kind of supported the community or helped us out at a con or things like that. I think this is the first time we've ever given them out to like the, the general public, but they've been around for years. Um, but yeah, everybody who got a trivia question right during the Kickstarter um, is, has got a no scroll in the mail. And actually probably some of them have probably arrived, the ones that we mailed out in the first couple of days of the Kickstarter, although with US mail these days, you can never, oh, look, somebody actually said they got one in the mail. Good, that's oh, awesome. sweet. Yeah, so you actually opened it, P. Varkin? Did you really open it? I thought it was oh, awesome no. when I opened, that's what he writes. We've got we've got ten minutes left, and we have broken one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. So we're no. a grand left no, for, the bespoke, for the bespoke uh, ca uh, characters. Oh, there we go. It, go. it continues to go up. So we we might just make so it. if if we so. say Jim Sketch's name three times, does he right. appear? Sketch, in sketch, <laughs> sketch. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was asking like hypothetically how do you order two sets i was like i know this hypothetical question because you're only asking about two you know <laughs> so. jim deserves like an award jim deserves a no scroll just for being jim actually let me make a note <laughs> <laughs> he is like single-handedly he's got to have funded some percentage of the game success at this point <laughs> send, send him a no scroll envelope so you know so it's an envelope to put all the receipts from goodman games everything he buys <laughs> yeah. it comes sketch crawl classics <laughs> yeah, <Trump. laughs> oh. yeah. But thank you gabriel who said he just added Ooh. two sets of dice awesome. that's awesome all right okay yeah. sorry so this this came to mind because i actually um I mailed off my original uh, DCC 100 map to Sketch just for. That's right. He, he was going through some hard times or something. It, like life was rough for a moment. I was like, ah, here, have something that is going to mean a lot to you. Um, but, but, uh, Beatty, not Beatty, I'm sorry, Tim DeShane is going to be running DCC 100 just a little bit after GaryCon. So cool. I'm going to bring, you know, the, the, the map that um, you guys produced for us, Joseph, you know, the, the, the draft map. And I'm going to pass it off to him at GaryCon for him so he can he can Excellent. run it at the game. But anybody who's going to GaryCon should come up, sign the back of the map. Because it's just That's a, a great white idea. blank thing. So all of us at GaryCon, but any fans that come up, we should all like uh, pin in, you know, and like have this traveling map. And then I was thinking like, I don't know, DCC days or, you know, love of the Cyclops con, whatever. We should auction it off for charity and like, send the dcc 100 draft map uh, that's a great idea map. yeah yeah with everybody's yeah. signatures and i don't know that'd be cool so yeah I, I need to remember to bring i'll bring it to gary con but we'll, we'll we'll sign it and illustrate it there and pass it around and anybody can come to the booth and sign on it and it'd be cool yeah yeah and just to add some context to that the, the map that harley showed there's only three of those in existence so to prepare for this project the printer actually processed a bunch of files for us and actually made three drafts of the spinning map so that we could make sure this thing actually works <laughs> so we used doug's art and the printer made the free maps and mike harley and i each have one of these prototypes um yeah. and luckily the maps actually do work but that's pretty cool harley that's a great idea and i, I actually i have mine too maybe i'll bring it to gin con or something and we can be sweet charity or something like that that's That'd a great cool. idea yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right everybody we have eight minutes left and we're at 199 342 <laughs> um, so you've all got two kidneys time to sell one <laughs> You can get by on one, and hold on. Let's do it in the next. I think we have one more. Oh, perfect! All right, sweet. Yeah. Before, before we um, keep going, we, we, oh. there's a there's a question I want I want to answer. We have uh, uh, Drexia808 uh, has a question. If there's anything in the works for Mutant Crawl Classics, Ooh. I would oh, yes. say tune in to Maw of Mike next month. That will be the first Monday in April, and I will have things to talk about. No. Nice. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff in the works for Mutant Crawl Classics. Mike is on a tear. I lost my hair, bud. <laughs> The idea is we tease, so they tune in and watch the show, Joe. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to have this. And this. <laughs> How many Errol Otis covers are there? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot that works, folks. Watch the show. It's great. That's how y'all got it. <laughs> All right. So, um, Mike does have a lot to talk about. He's, no, he's good at that. Yeah. It's her Bob. Um, cool. So, Elena, can you queue up the next, uh, next poll? Oh, great. Which of these right. game designers did not write a DCC module? Monty Cook, Gary Gygax, Dave Arneson, or Mike Merles? So three of these folks, all of them Ooh. are you know well known and recognized in the industry. Three of them did write 
a DCC module, but one well of them played. did not. Well played. I can see the voting happening. All right, we have seven minutes left. The countdown has begun. Yep. 199343. Oh, it just went down. Somebody adjusted their pledge down. What? What? It's, it's okay. Somebody was readjusting their stuff because they're going to add more. That's just what oh, saying. right. So, yeah. That must be it. Yeah. All right, so far, it's a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad you were I will, I will right. point out Gary Gygax was still alive when Good Games began. Okay. You know, so. <laughs> Good reminder. <laughs> Yeah, he actually did a lot of work for Troller Games in the, uh, um, whenever that was, 2000, early 2000s through yeah. like yeah. 2005-ish, 2010-ish. Look at that. We're less than 500 bucks underneath, away from bespoke uh, character sheets. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, the Twitch audience, you are correct. It was Gary Guy Guys. Yep. Monty Cook wrote number 50 in the series. Mike Merles wrote number two in the series, and Dave Arneson wrote number 3.5. So thank you, Drexia808, for the subscription. Thank you. They subscri you subscribed just because I, I promised there was more MCC stuff coming. All right. <laughs> <That's all laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't want to miss out. That's it. <laughs> all right. All right. Five minutes. If we let we need less than $100 for each minute left, and then we, we've got, we got, uh, we got right. that's it. Come on. Everybody deep inside. I feel the <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're almost oh, there. It's really close. 199, 579. 614. I feel like yours is updating faster than mine, Mike. You must have a better internet connection. It could be. I mean, you know, <laughs> some, of, some of us are at home and not on the road, you know. <laughs> yes. so. so, Mike, right. really quickly, what are you, what is so, all right, so DCC 100 is over and done with. We're moving on to the, the next awesome era of DCC adventures. What do you have? writing what are you writing right now that's amazing what i'm writing right now yeah um, you I, emails <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Yeah, emails the man, people the man that brought us lake bar it. that no. brought us the shutter mountains he's been reduced to it's, well it is you know but um no i am working on the next uh dcc like bar adventure uh nice. which is uh which is uh which is fun because i because I, I gotta get you know i gotta get back on the horse for dcc like bar because i got big things in mind for that and yep. uh, I've got something for MCC, which I'm going to be working on. And um, and but uh, but you know, we the first uh, the first three DCC adventures, DCC one, two, and three, have already are kind of already in the works. And uh, there will be some some at least one set of names we haven't seen in a while. So that that'll, that'll be nice. And then uh, oh, and cool. some other names of people who've been really busy doing other projects for like the last five years. We've got to get them back on the horse too. So you nice. Know. nice. Good stuff. And how about you, There's Joseph? Can we ever get you to ride another uh, DCC? Actually, so I don't know, but I am really excited because I'm going to be starting a new gaming group this summer, I think, with my, my nice. oldest son and some kids from the Cub Scouts and some of his friends from school. So I'm actually gearing up again to start running games <laughs> regularly for like the, I guess, the, I guess the youngest, maybe six, but like the six to 10 age group. That's um, awesome. Which I think will, I've always had a lot of fun running games from kids, you know, back when it was my little cousins for a long time or now with, with this group so uh -huh. i've actually been plotting out in my head like what adventures am i going to lead them through and oh, that's so um, cool. yeah so that, it's actually getting me really excited and i had this idea for an adventure that might come to be now that i'm going to have like a you know a regular gaming group to, uh -huh. to go to and try ideas on so we'll see we'll see we've ne we've never done the the, the wizard's apprentice adventure we, that's, we talked about that a lot when dcc first came out it's like oh the, like the ancient wizard has been slain and now you have his apprentices and his servants all the people that were living in the tower now have yeah. to like go rescue him or like you know like you know like they're going to follow the owl and do that sort of thing like we, we never did that adventure that'd be cool to do at some point if only we had a writer handy who could write that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a lot to do man there's so many to do there's so many yeah yeah well thank you for asking i'm really excited about purple planet <laughs> <laughs> sorry harley harley tell us what you're working oh, on. i'm stoked <laughs> it's so oh we lost mike sorry mike where'd mike go where'd mike go uh, i don't know uh, all right who knows what our names say now times. this is this is what makes okay, okay everybody welcome back we yep. sacrificed michael curtis and we really wanted those part. bespoke character sheets <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> I really want my Purple Planet Gladiator adventure to come out. So, <laughs> yes. yep. So we're in the final <laughs> seconds, we're just over the 200K mark. So thank you for everybody for helping us make this happen. No way, did it happen? No, on mine, I, I know we have different refresh rates. On mine, no, I, just, I, I, I haven't looked. I, I would, I would, I would stroke out. This is too exciting. Two hundred thousand and thirty-nine dollars on mine. No list. way, that's oh, awesome. Yeah, we're, yeah, excellent. Forty-two seconds. Right on. Oh. <laughs> Well, Joseph, I was I was too socially inept to, to count us in, so you should count us out when we get down to the final end of the uh, the, the Kickstarter. Okay, mine says thirty seconds. So yeah, right. when we get down to ten, we'll do the ten. We'll do okay, the all right. Thing. Yeah, hope Mike's I, okay. I assume his computer crashed. No, well, there was. <laughs> so, I don't know. All right, we're gonna go on without him. That's what Doug would say. <laughs> <laughs> Roll his body. <laughs> <laughs> Take his dice. Take his oh. dice. oh wait, we're at the countdown. Okay, ten. All right, kick it. Nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ding. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I forgot to write the thank you note. Ah, you you can't once the Kickstarter is over, you can't edit the thing. And I usually try to write thank you at the top. Uh, that'll be an update or something. That's distracted right. by the countdown. Yeah. Awesome. That thank is you very unreal. much. Everybody. That's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So we get the character sheets. That's ah, I forgot awesome. to see the graphic too. Dang. Oh well. <laughs> We got to remember, don't reference the graphic when we're going through our like project checklist of what to, what Ooh. things to, to get made. No, oh, this is so awesome. Good. I'm thank you to all the fans who helped make this yes. happen. This is really really cool. I uh, it's really really cool. It's 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 remarkable, really. Like, yeah, for folks to come in this strong, you know, and it's it. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so grateful for everybody that made it possible for us to get to dc 100 and then and then to make that milestone like a really impressive meaningful adventure is really cool so yeah, yeah. no harley you did an awesome adventure it, it, it is really cool and nobody's ever done anything like this in the history of the rpg industry i mean yeah that's, yeah 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 and and, and, that, and that's cool but i but it's it, it also comes down to like you know to have you know amazing artists come in and illustrate it and then to yeah. have you know, judges fall in love with it at the table and then then pour that energy into running it for their players is just it's just amazing. I can't yeah, I can't I can't wait to see this thing, you know, become manifest and material here. It's yeah. yeah. I'm, so, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And for those of you who wanted the 225k stretch goal, which is Mike's crazy judges screen, <laughs> what we decided to do is add that onto every project from now on. So. <laughs> <laughs> sooner or later we'll clear it up for one of these projects and uh and hopefully be able to get it made there you go yeah oh good mike's in the chat okay good Woo, he's still alive <laughs> let's put his dice back <laughs> oh shoot yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's another story there i gotta tell you oh that was embarrassing yeah. oh thanks everybody know. yeah it was really cool really appreciate all the help um and all the support it's, it's always really gratifying to know that so many people are really just supportive and, and care about what we're doing because frankly we all just like doing dungeon crawls and that's why we're here so yeah joseph uh some what is it uh judge jen asks what's next what do we can you talk about our convention schedule real quick before we out yeah great call um actually harley why don't you finish what you're saying about purple planet because we are working on bringing the purple planet back. oh i'm I, so I stoked know you've been working on i'm so stoked stuff. This is actually really cool. And so, all right. So like your, your character. So has any, everyone's read uh, Kings of the night, right. By uh, it's the King Cole adventure. Anyways, um, King Cole gets, he is basically like, he gets summoned to, to the future for him. But for this one, the PCs get summoned into the past of the purple planet. Like when they're so before, before the Kith just became like these, these bestial marauders, they had this grand civilization with this only just, be, it was at the end of the empire, just slowly beginning to decay. And the, and the God King is dead. So, right. So the, there's this dead desiccated God King atop his throne and they're, and they're burning incense all around him, keeping the flies off of him. So he doesn't, you know, rot and molder yet anyways. And so to decide the next God King, these, all these different Kith houses come together and have these gladiatorial battles, like um, inspired by, you know, by chessmen on Mars, chessmen of Mars. Um, and so there's these weird es esoteric rules about how each gladiator, which is a PC, can move on this strange like chessboard. And so, you know, if, if my character, you know, dons one gladi you know, gladiator outfit, I can move, you know, uh, diagonally. And if another gladiator 
dons another outfit you know he can move you know up and forth and side to side anyways and so they, they all these gladiators teams these these houses of kith come together and they and they duke it out in this in this blood-soaked arena for the right of being the next god king of the purple planet and then hopefully the pcs win and if not um they die and it's <laughs> i'm so excited it's really cool though i can't wait it's like because like yeah it's really cool i i that's the best thing, right? Because like you know, you write something and you're done, and you're like, oh man, and then like you come up with that next cool idea, and that's the thing you fall in love with. And so I don't know that yeah. For a long time it was DCC 100, and now I can't wait for people to see the 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 chessmen of the Purple Planet. It's so going to be so cool. I'm stoked. Yes. it's going to be awesome. So it it and so what we're doing, folks. You know, Purple Planet has been popular with a lot of people, but it's actually been out of print for like three years now or something. The box set sold out quite a while ago. So in the same way that we brought Chain Coffin back in a hardback form, we're pulling together the Purple Planet box set, as well as there were three adventures published for it, as well as a little bit of content in one of the program guides, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and we're pulling all that together into a hardback with this new adventure by Harley. And uh, for those of you who have been buying DCC in German or Spanish, <laughs> Italian, Portuguese, or French, there's actually been some Purple Planet uh, content published in the German market, which has never been published in English before. So that'll actually be put into this hardback too. Um, so all of that will be happening in a, uh, a couple months as we work through some other stuff. Prior to that, some of you may have noticed we're doing an Indiegogo for the Tome of Adventure, which is a, a project I announced like three years ago, then COVID happened. Um, but that'll go live in a bit. And that's going to be a compilation, a hardback compilation of the first it's either six or seven DCC adventures. A lot of people ask for a compilation format, a lot of people for the hardback. So we're finally going to get around to that. And then some other cool stuff, lots of cool stuff in the works. It actually feels like this is one of those years where after two years of COVID stagnation, we're finally just getting a lot of stuff out on the table, which yep. would be great. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Thanks for thanks counting guys. down. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for the support. <laughs> we'll catch you later. Mm -hmm.